linear factorization. Well, those are all my zeros. So I'm going to do it the quick way, and then I'm going to show you guys how I came up with it. The linear factorization is y equals x plus 2, x plus i times x minus i. And all I simply did is I took each of these equal to x, sorry, and then set them equal to 0. And then each one of these is a product times 0, and that's how I got my factors. Does anybody have any questions on that before I move on to the next portion? Is everybody OK? You can say. Yes. Nick, no questions? OK. Yep, this is my linear factorization. It's linear. And it's all, they're all factors by this. Now, all we got to do, the second step. Stop yes? explaining why it's x plus 2. You got to add the two to both sides. Yeah. We'll go. Over. All right, we'll cover another one and go through it again. So, again, on this one, though, now we got to just multiply everything out. Now, we got to multiply complex numbers, which hopefully, if you guys remember from Algebra 2 days, um, we said i, our imaginary unit, was negative 1, right? If you guys square both sides, you get i squared equals, well, what's the square root? What's the square root squared is just negative 1. So i squared is equal to negative 1. Okay, That's from Algebra 2 days. Remember it. Just write it down as a fact. It's gonna. It's not important for. I mean, this. We don't have time, obviously, to be talking too much about complex numbers. It's basically just a refresh of your memory. Huh? So, if we're multiplying this out, ladies and gentlemen, I notice that this is basically an expansion of difference of two squares. The first two terms are the same. The last two terms are the same, and the signs are alternating. One's negative, one's positive. So that's an expansion of difference of two squares. What's important about that is that saves me time, because I know I only need to multiply the first and the last two terms, because the middle terms are going to combine to 0, or at least have a coefficient of 0. So when I multiply x times x, I get x squared. i times negative i is negative i squared. Right? But we know i, I squared is negative 1. Minus negative 1 is 1. And again, guys, let's think about that. If you were to solve x squared plus 1, would you get negative i and positive i? No. Well, why not? Yeah, right, and you get the plus or minus. So we can test our factorization. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, the next step is now I just need to multiply this by FOIL, or you know, distributive property, multiplying every term. So I'm just going to multiply this out. x squared times x is x cubed. Uh, x squared times 2 is a positive 2x squared. Uh, x times 1 is positive x. And 2 times 1 is a positive 2. So I go from zeros to linear factorization to my standard formula. Okay? So that's kind of like coming full circle a little bit. I do want to give you guys, uh, I do have to give you one more problem that's a little bit more difficult. Uh, 